Hello everyone, this is Helios Raven. I tell you how you do it, even if you don't care. And today I'm going to put a little on hold on painting the Harlequin for a moment to do another um, paint, uh, another video, just briefly to summarize. You ever had that issue where you go to paint and this happens? Stuff's starting to dry out. That is a darn shame, isn't it? Major problem is is that that means you have to go out and buy more paint and in some cases this can be cause a problem like um, for example just gonna go on a quick little rant here about Games Workshop and their paint policies oh, sorry about that whoever decides which paints Games Workshop will sell is a complete idiot now let me just um, do a little background here is every so often Games Workshop changes the paint company that produces the colors for them. Um, like, for example, I don't know who was the paint company prior, but one of them was, uh, but the thing is, is the Citadel paint name is owned by Games Workshop. Um, at least I believe that's the name is Citadel Paints, like that's, yeah, Citadel Color is what they usually go by. That's Games Workshop's paint name. There was one company that used to do it called Coat Day Arms. And they were actually the paint company when Brizzen Brass was available. And like this is actually right here. This is um this is the brass paint that was Brizzen Brass. So if you ever wanna look for it you have to you look up um Coat Day Arms. It's only in Britain so it's going to be a little bit more money for the paint, but if you really want the old colors and a lot of the old inks, they're really nice to go to, you know. Like, I personally like using red ink for for um, blood effects, so I might pick, so I like to try and buy it from them so I can get my old blood effect technique back instead of learning a new one. Um, and they just, uh, they recently, they just, and they changed um, paint companies again. And usually, when they change paint companies, colors get lost. And I just want to do a quick rant is, is, you know, like, they got rid of Brizzen Brass, they got rid of, um, they got rid of, um, Bile Green, which was, like, the Highlight 2 Scorpion Green, and one that they just recently got rid of, which was Tentacle Pink. Now, I can understand most colors, and for some reason I guess Games Workshop decided, oh, you know, can have pink, you know, pink is, you know, too happy a color, um, but they seem to forget... The Emperor's children have a pink in their color scheme. It's usually, um, I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe it's like black and pink is their color scheme or something like that. Like, it's a very white, white pink type of thing. So I guess they figured, oh, you know, people just, you know, put white into their blood red and there'll be no problem. But that's a big oversight, and you can use tentacle pink for a lot of stuff, you know, like... Um, like, if you want to do demon, demonettes, I think it's obvious, quite obviously, obvious what you could use tentacle pink for. Tyranids, you know, their tongues, same with orcs, and stuff like that. Um, it's a really, and, you know, it's a really nice color, and for Harlequins, it's great for Harlequin color schemes. And, you know, and the fact that it's an official chapter color. Now, I'm not saying, you know, like like, um, the white scars type of thing, you know, this is, like, thing, you know, it's just, you know, Space Marines painted this particular way, or, um, the Nightbringers, which is just the, night, no, the Night Lords, which are just, um, you know, Chaos Marines with, um, with, um, a particular color scheme. No, this is, you know, this is a chapter that they've made models for, because, you know, that's what the Noise Marines are. The Noise Marines are stereotypically Emperor's children, models, whereas the Thousand Sons are Thousand Sons, the Death, the, the Plague Marines are Death Guard, and the Crone Berserkers are World Eaters. And so you would figure they'd want to keep the color for that unit available. And so that was, that's it, that's my little rant about how Games Workshop is an idiot comparatively to the paints, and I'm gonna have to go hunt down um, the old company that made Tentacle Pink, because there's still some stuff I want to do with that. Now, going off of that, we're going to revive this Space Wolf Grey so I don't have to buy a new set. 
And just for an example, like this tentacle pink here was a lot worse off than the Space Wolf's Grave. The Space Wolf's Grave is still like soft. This was practically um, hardened, and as you can see, you know, it's back in like a liquid pliable form. I gotta do a little bit more to it, as you can see, it's kind of built up. But I, can't, I revived this stuff from the dead. Now, what I'm gonna do is, it's not a permanent solution, like I said, it's, as you saw, my tentacle pink looked a lot better before, but it does get the job done. And what you do is first you take the, what I do is, you know, I, t I get like a metal, a metal rod, I used an old, um, X-Acto knife, um, handle for this, and I scoop out from the top and I put it in the, the jar bottom. Now, make sure I get as much in there as possible. Then I take, I usually do this by a sink, but since I'm not near one, I'm going to take an eyedropper, fill it up with water, and one, two, three, four, five. There's probably more in there than I saw because I was checking the camera. And then what I do then is, is I start mashing. It's sort of like um, like an alchemic set, like a chemistry set here. And you swirl it around and around. And okay, so we got this little putty thing going. And you don't want to do too, too much water because if you do too much, it gets overly watered and then the paint just doesn't work out at all. And I've tried this with metal colors before and I've never had any luck. It usually ends up separating the metal color from the stuff. It usually ends up separating the colors and it just never is the same. But... This stuff tends to work for the regular pigmented, um, just plain colors like, you know, white, gray, black. And, you know, you just sit here with this. Some techniques that some people do is they put marbles in the paint to, um, help mix it around and such. My problem is, is I tend to forget the marbles in there and then they get hardened into the paint and then I lose it. And... This usually, like, this tends to be a more permanent solution for paints that still got some life left to them, like it's in that mid-stage. As you saw with the tentacle pink, it wasn't doing, holding up too well. Oh, I'm sorry about that. And so then we sit here. And, <laughs> and it may look like I'm losing a lot of paint on the um, handle here, but surprisingly, I'm not losing that much paint from this whole process. One, two, three, five. And push it around. And if you feel like you're not getting in deep enough into the um, sides of the paint jar that, you know, it's just not getting as much of a nice coverage as, as you want, what you can do is, here first, yeah, pop the lid. Sorry about that. Mm. You know, it's still kind of, um, I guess I would say creamy 
want it to be more slightly soupish. If you get my drift. Like I want it to be a little more liquidy than thick. Sort of more slightly watered. Whereas this is kind of very thick in a sense. I want it to be slightly watery when I'm done. I'm probably going to do one more shot in the eyedropper. Ten. And there we go. Now it's starting to look like it's old self again. Now if you feel like maybe it's a little too thin down, well like the top still has a lot of um, thick um, paint on it so that can like kind of drip down and kind of help restabilize the paint color but look at that. Pretty much as good as good as the day I bought it. And so we sit here and we mix it up for a little bit. Scrape off the sides of me of my mixer here as best as I can. Okay. And the reason why like, I try to use a metal it'll pull for this is one, two, three, pretty much clean. And you want like a smooth surface so paint doesn't get into like any nooks and crannies so when you go to mix it you end up mixing like if you fixed red and then you go to make, fix a, white, a container of white you don't end up with pink paint. And then, okay, so with that done, we take this, we close her back up. Give it a couple of shakes, and paint's back to good as normal. It's a little thicker, and it's going to probably need another treatment in a couple of days, but I just saved myself three bucks, or however, how expensive this stuff is. I haven't bought paint in a while, so I don't remember. But, so there you go, and like I said, I just saved you guys about three, two or three dollars on paint and if and that's basically all I got for today so until next time this is Helios Raven signing off